Airplanes have revolutionized life on Earth, transforming business and leisure alike. But planes are major emitters, and to fly responsibly in our warming world, the industry needs to revolutionize again. Today, airplanes produce anywhere between 2 to 4% of global CO2. A lot of the carbon that's released is at high altitude, which increases the global warming potential even higher. The world's largest association of airlines said in October 2021 that the industry will aim for net zero carbon emissions by 2050. That year, an estimated 10 billion people are expected to fly. The association warned that the goal is a huge challenge. Planes require a lot of energy and you have a really small space to put the fuel in. So whatever you use as an energy source, a fuel, a battery, a hydrogen, uh, it needs to contain a lot of energy in very, very small amount of space and it has to weigh very little. To reduce emissions, innovators are largely focused on three energy sources alternative fuels, batteries, and hydrogen fuel cells. If airlines could replace jet fuel made from petroleum with greener fuels, they wouldn't need to change their fleet's engines. Those fuels can be made from biomass or chemicals like hydrogen. The most sustainable way to go is to use biomass waste. The cheapest way to make those fuels is with the corn itself. So in economic terms, you're going to be competing for that land and, and those resources. You can do it chemically as well. I mean, you can take hydrogen, react CO2, and then get something that resembles jet fuel in a chemical reactor. But that requires a lot of energy, which is relatively expensive and not always actually sustainable. Engineers are trying to make batteries smaller and more powerful. In the meantime, they're retrofitting small planes with existing battery technology. The short flights that are currently being served by big airplanes will transition to smaller airplanes. 50% of all flights are less than 500 miles away. The current energy is good enough to do those short flights. Batteries for cars are, of course, they're too heavy for use in an airplane. But does that mean that there's no potential battery that could go inside of an airplane? No. Powering a long-range flight would require new battery chemistry that hasn't been invented yet. Hydrogen electric means that we have hydrogen on board the aircraft in hydrogen tanks. Then we take that hydrogen from the tanks, take oxygen from the air, combine it in a device called fuel cells. Hydrogen approach is the only one that will work because of the intrinsic energy density of hydrogen. It's actually three times better than jet fuel. But hydrogen can be explosive and keeping it in liquid form requires heavy equipment. Despite the hurdles, entrepreneurs are bullish about the innovation timeline. They say recent test flights of electric planes show promise. Five passenger, nine passenger, 12 passenger are already flying around with electric propulsion only. In the second half of this decade, you'll start to see certification and paying customers for retrofitted airplanes. And in the beginning of the next decade, you'll start to see purpose-built clean sheet airplanes designed for electric propulsion. If we want to speed up the timeline, industry leaders say we'll need government incentives and consumer buy-in. If the government were to say 2040, 2050, all flights in the United States that are less than 300 miles in range must be zero emission, what would happen? First of all, everyone would freak out and say, oh my God, how are we going to do it? But then people are going to come together and say, you know what, actually, there's some companies building electric motors. There's some companies designing electric planes. Let's just accelerate them. And since now it's law or policy, then there's an incentive to invest. There's no aerospace industry in a vacuum. There's an aerospace industry because consumers like to fly. And so consumers expressing their interest in demanding low emissions airplanes is a great place to start. 